Hey, what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chiefs Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I am your new and official, as of yesterday, uh, Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guests today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How you ladies doing? Hi, Chief. Good to see you. Welcome. Oh, man, it's it's awesome. And uh, so before I get started, I want to give a, a another shout out to uh, Chief Master Sergeant Luis, Luis Reyes for holding down the fort and, and, and passing the torch to me. He's done an amazing job with this uh, Chief's chat. He got this thing started. I think he tried to do 50 episodes is what y'all told me before he got out of there. He probably did a little bit more because he was going. Uh, so uh, I just want to thank him because he, he's he's been an awesome sponsor for me. And uh, I, I feel like I, it, I'm in good hands here. So, um, but today we got an outstanding guest that has spent the vast majority of his life serving others. So Julie, uh, would you please introduce today's guest? Absolutely, Chief. We are happy to welcome today's guest to Chief Chat. He's going to have a lot of great information for our viewers. And you're right. He served our country for 22 years in the Army. He deployed all around the world, earned numerous awards, including the Legion of Merit. For the last 10 years, he has continued to serve Soldiers for Life with Army Retirement Services, where he now serves as the director. Please join us in welcoming Mark Overberg. Hey. hey, thank you, thank you. Mark, 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 it's Mark. great. I really appreciate you having me on. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. We're super excited to have you on. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for Mark, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Um, now is a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. So you'll know who's coming up next. Uh, so Mark, thank you for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Can you tell the viewers uh, where you calling us from today? Yeah, absolutely, Chief. Uh, I'm located in Arlington, Virginia, near the Pentagon. Oh, you're in DC life. Yeah, well, I don't go over to DC too often, but yes. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Mark, so you're the director of Army Retirement Services. Could you kick this off by telling us what your office does and what services it offers? Yeah, absolutely, Julie. Um, so uh, Army Retirement Services is, in a nutshell, is responsible for preparing soldiers to retire and then advising them and advocating for them uh, and their surviving spouses until death. So our retirement planning effort is, is mainly a, a financial planning aspects, things uh, revolving around retired pay and benefits, uh, applying for retirement, medical care, VA benefits, those kind of things. We don't get involved too much in the post-retirement employment area. We leave that to the transition assistance program. And then for our post-retirement group, uh, we uh, focus on educating them about changes in laws and policies that apply to them uh, or impact their families. And then also advising our Army senior leaders about retirement issues. Um, my office is really actually a pretty small office um, near the Pentagon, we, we do policy. The, the real faces of our program are the Army's retirement services officers. Those you're uh, gonna find on Army installations and then each state's National Guard headquarters and each of the Army Reserve Readiness Divisions has one. Oh, very good, very good. The robust network then. Yeah, absolutely, I think it is. I'd like it to be bigger, but. <laughs> your office also works with the Exchange Retiree Advisory Council. Tell us about your role on the council and how it strengthens the exchange benefit. Yeah, you know, APHES is one of the significant retirement benefits that we often take for granted. I mean, the ability to shop at the PX, and for most retired soldiers who don't live near a military base, the ability to shop at the exchange online is a way to save money. You know, it also helps us keep our military memories alive. And, and you know, we contribute to the MWR fund uh, at the same time. So with the Exchange Retiree Advisory Council, uh, what I do is I offer the uh, AFES leadership the, uh, the perspectives of our 1.25 million retired soldiers and surviving spouses and the things that they think are important. 
and I'm especially happy to support you know the efforts that you guys do to take care of them like today's call and uh, so you know it's surprising and most people are shocked to learn that the Army's retired community is the Army's largest demographic it's larger than the active duty force the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve combined wow I I didn't know I, that yeah. that's I had some weird feedback there, but no, I had no idea. Oh yeah, no, I, I had no idea. That, that's a big force. If they if they if they got them all three combined. Yeah, it's it's a it's a force that uh, you know is sort of underutilized, and that's one of the things that we're trying to do is is find ways for retired soldiers to uh, continue to serve. That's awesome, awesome. So, uh, Mark, you retired from the army in uh, 2007 after 22 years of service. Uh, can you tell us some leadership lessons that you learned along the way? Oh my goodness, Chief. There, <clears throat> there are many, uh, uh, and I'm still learning. Uh, <laughs> never done. Uh, I would say that one of the most important is, is, is taking care of soldiers, um, ensuring that they have the tools and the training, you know, that they need to accomplish their mission, but also looking out for their welfare and their family's welfare. Um, you know, I, I remember deploying uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Um, we were some of the first troops over into a place called Karshid Khanabad in southern Uzbekistan. And that's, that's where we started the campaign uh, in Afghanistan from. And one of my favorite memories from that time was watching my soldiers' faces as they stood in line to shop at the exchange over there. It opened up on Christmas Day in uh, 2001, it was in uh -huh. just one single tent, uh, but the soldiers were so happy to have some comforts from home. You know, I gotta tell you, the, the mobile field exchanges are wonderful for the morale of deployed soldiers. I love sorry. that. Thank you for sharing that. That's, I bet, you know, Christmas day, you're already missing your, your family and those comforts of home. And then to have that there, that must've been, that must've been really, comforting and must have been really something to have that there for the holiday. Yeah, after eating, uh, you know, MREs for uh, <laughs> a couple months straight, you know, it was, uh, it was nice to have some snacks and some soda and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it was great. <laughs> I like snacks, so I can appreciate that. Um, yeah, that that's what I this heard. mission, oh, that's what this organization is all about, is, 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 is going to where, where the, the service members are so we can uh, support them the best way we know how. Absolutely, yeah. Chief. Um, and Mark, I've heard you say that retirement is a process and not an event. So for all of our viewers who are approaching retirement or maybe just beginning that new chapter, can you explain what you mean by that? Sure, Julie. Um, so the transition from a military career after 20 or 30 years to a civilian life, which is usually away from a military installation, it's a big transition. It's not something that you do easily or quickly. Um, and you don't learn about the changes that are gonna hit you uh, all at once. It takes some time. Um, what, what many people don't understand is there's a number of decisions, especially family decisions that have to be made. These take time and, and often it's information that you don't have. And so you need to seek the expert advice of some subject matter experts. And so, some of these decisions are actually ones that are going to be with you for the rest of your life. So really, you got to take some time, you know, carefully deliberate, talk to your spouse about it. So, um, you know, the story goes is uh, I tell soldiers, if you think of retirement as just a ceremony, you're setting yourself and your family up for failure. Uh, so we encourage soldiers to start their retirement planning at least 24 months before retirement. So yeah, for me, process. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. So for me, um, I, I, life has been pretty easy for me because I knew I was going to re-enlist. And so you just kind of go through the motions and, and re-enlist and re-enlist and re-enlist. And then you start to get to this part of your career, you're like, hold on, I got to make some real grown up decisions. And, and, and now I'm like, okay, what do I want to be when I grow up uh, post, post retirement? So you're right. It's, it's a little anxiety to be honest with you, just to kind of figure out like, okay, what, what direction do I want to go in now that I do I reenlist or do I uh, is this going to be my last enlistment? And so 
you know, going into that, that step of your career can be a little. Yeah. So for your career, you know, you've been told where to go and what to do. And now all of a sudden you have to think through it and go, okay, what is it I like to do? You know, and, and where do I really want to live? You know, where's my family want to live? Um, those are things that uh, you can't decide in a, in a few minutes. Correct. Great conversation. And Mark, just switching directions real quick. Has COVID changed the way your office is working right now? And how has it been working through this unexpected time? Uh, yes, uh, COVID has actually changed uh, the way we do business a, a fair amount. Um, our retirement services officers out there are, are not giving the group and individual briefings to soldiers and their spouses that they normally do. Uh, so it's a bit of a challenge. What we did is we modified, we have a, the Army has a, a, a mandatory retirement planning seminar. It takes about a day uh, for all the uh, soldiers to attend. And <clears throat> what we did is we took that brief and we modified it so it can be sort of a self-serve thing. And we posted it onto our website. Uh, and so that's where they can they can pick it up and read through it. And then they can also talk with the, uh, the RSOs. They're still conducting their usual business, but they're working out of their houses. You know, so they're doing a lot of business by email and Skype and Zoom. Um, so the, uh, the other thing that uh, has changed is one of the things the Army does with retirement services officers is to make sure that they are trained and certified. So when they talk to soldiers, they really know what they're talking about. They know their business well. So we, every RSO has to go through certification training uh, when they first become an RSO and then every three years after that. So we've had to suspend the in-person training. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we did is um, we're now using Microsoft Teams to do the training. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but uh, you know we're adjusting. Uh, but I think everybody is going to be ready to go back to the personal touch. Oh yeah, we, we are Microsoft Teams and Zoom all the all the way uh, for everything. So yeah, I, I totally understand uh, how how COVID has kind of made it difficult, or or just you know try find a different way of doing things. Yeah, and I imagine retiring is it's so personal right like you're you're leaving your uh, one life behind and starting a new and you want that personal connection to be able to plan for your next stage so i applaud you and, and your teams for trying to make it as seamless as possible for all of our heroes who are moving on to the next chapter in their lives thanks so so mark you've had a very interesting career um can you tell us more about it? Can you can you let us know? Because uh, it's always important to share your story. Um, and and wh why did you join the army? What 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 made you uh, come into the to the military? And uh, some of the highlights of your career. You know that's uh, interesting. You say that, Chief, because one of the things that we really really push uh, retired soldiers to do is to tell their army stories. Uh, so now the shoes on the other foot. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, I started out, I enlisted in, in 1985. I was uh, an airborne uh, all source intelligence analyst. Uh, I kind of knew that I wanted to become an officer, but I started off as uh, enlisted. And three years later, after I had become a, a, a sergeant, uh, I went to officer candidate school and got commissioned as a lieutenant in the cavalry. Uh, so that was definitely a good place to be a lieutenant. I uh, learned a lot of great things. Uh, my first assignment was in Germany. Uh, we were patrolling the uh, East German and Czechoslovakian borders, uh, you know, looking at the Soviets and the East Germans and the Czechs, you know, and those, those countries are gone now. So that's interesting historical note. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but um, I served as a, uh, a cavalry troop executive officer during Desert Storm. A uh, lot, lot, lot learned there. Um, Later, the, uh, the Army decided that uh, I should be uh, in logistics, so they transferred me over to that. Uh, while I was in logistics, I had a couple uh, adventures. Uh, the first big one probably was uh, in 1994 when, when the United States uh, invaded uh, Haiti uh, to reinstall the Aristide government. Uh, I was part of that invasion force. Uh, uh, 
so that was an interesting uh, thing. And then later, uh, right after 9-11, as I was talking about before, um, you know, as part of the first Americans into Uzbekistan and then into uh, Afghanistan, while I was, um, you know, the first part of 2002, I commanded the uh, small uh, outpost in northern Afghanistan in a city called mazar e sharif um, and then finally redeployed back to, uh, to Fort Bragg. Um, probably a, another interesting job was my, uh, the last one I had on active duty. Uh, never done anything like this before, but uh, I was the, uh, the program manager, the policy guy for the Army's military and civilian drug testing programs you know, to ensure we have ready forces. Um, so my career has been all over the place. Uh, I would say I'm definitely a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> And Mark, as you know, we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and military families watching from all over the world. Do you have any words of encouragement to share with all of our heroes? Sure, Leah. Um, you know, our, our service members should all know that, you know, we really truly support them in all that they do, whether it's training to deploy or, you know, fighting our battles or taking care of their families. You know, the, the military you know, like any organization uh, or any person is not perfect. Um, we can and we will make mistakes. But what I would say to them is when you have the opportunity to talk to a serviceman from another country, ask them about the support that they get from their citizens and their armies. You know, in America, we have your back. You know, Americans trust their military because of what the military is doing now and, and what uh, the current folks predecessors have done over the years, you know, and should any of the, uh, the current soldiers listening out there um, stay long enough to retire, you know, I want you to know that uh, I and, and the retirement services officers will be there to support you and your family throughout the rest of your lives. You know, we've got your back. Yeah, I can yeah, attest to that. Oh, you back. Um, yeah, I can attest to that because I always tell my airmen how, how blessed and fortunate we are. And uh, the military, uh, whatever you try to do in life, they got a program for it, right? And so if you, whatever affliction you have in life, they got, they got a program to try to get you better. So uh, it, it, I've, I've definitely learned so much with being in the military and to know that um, if I ever am going through something or I'm transitioning anywhere, they got a program to help me go through it. So we definitely appreciate you for, for leading the front on the retirement end. And thank you for those uplifting words. Uh, we got uh, some comments coming from Facebook. Um, we got we got uh, Alex De Leon. He says, "Welcome. I'm here from Qatar." So you got folks uh, chiming in from from, from Qatar. Um, we got uh, Ruth Delees Lee. She said, "I am for this initiative because my husband felt very depressed about not finding another job after retiring with 30 years of service." And so um, I'm sure there's plenty of stories about that. We kind of talked about that anxiety of, of, of getting out of, the, of something that you've probably been in more than you've been in anything else. I, I tell my airmen too, uh, uh, I've been in the military longer than I've been uh, a civilian, a father, a husband, uh, or anything else. So uh, yeah, I can, I can imagine that transition is just, just hard. So um, also we got Mike Wags that says logistic rock, logistics rocks. So uh <laughs> You got a loggy out there that's loving life. Hello. He, said, he says, uh, once again, great content, information for all. I'm fired up every time we air. So uh, a lot of great comments out there, a lot of good information uh, to pass on to, to our, our listeners. And Michelle says, thank you for your service. So from all of us to Mark, thank you so much for serving. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, you when I enlisted uh, back in 1985, um, I went home and told my wife I enlisted. And she said, uh, you what? I said, yeah, I enlisted. She said, because I was married at the time. And she said, uh, uh, are you crazy? And I said, well, it's only for four years. And she said, four years? Well, I got bitten <laughs> by the bug and uh, 
35 years later, I'm still doing it. So that's what happens sometimes. And oh, Mark, yeah. you tell retiring soldiers, your miss mission has changed, but your duty has not. Can you talk about what that means for retirees? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, when, a, when a soldier is serving, you know, their mission is to train and deploy to fight and win our nation's wars. And that's their job, that's the mission. But when they retire from the military, they're not gonna be doing that anymore. We don't, yeah, sometimes we'll, we'll do some voluntary recalls of, of retirees, but really it's not the mission once you retire. So the idea is that um, we want soldiers to know that we still need them even after they leave. Um, so their mission is gonna change, but their duty to the country is not gonna change. So the mission for retired soldiers is, is easy one for everybody to remember. We call it hire and inspire. The higher part talks about our veterans. Um, we want retired soldiers to help veterans get jobs, help them through that transition, help mentor them. So that, you know, we know it's a rough time. And so that's what we want our retired soldiers to do. They have that 20, 30 years worth of experience and they now are, you know, have well networked themselves into their communities. The other thing we want them to do is to inspire. And there's really two parts to that. The first part is to inspire Americans through personal example uh, to trust and support the army. Our retired soldiers are really uh, I mean, we're dispersed all across the country in towns everywhere. And so they can help us kind of bridge the gap and, and chat the, the gap that is the, the civil military uh, divide. Um, the other thing we want them to do is to help inspire young Americans because, you know, the, in the Army's case, 79% of all serving soldiers have a family member who served. So we need to, it's a family business and we need to branch out. So we need to inspire other young Americans to join the army as we did. Uh, so hire and inspire, that's the new mission uh, for soldiers when they retire. And you know, it's, the mission's gonna change, but still there's a, there's a duty to the country. I like that. Um, I think everybody needs to, to feel valued and understand that they have a place even after their, um, their work life is over, their career is over, especially those who gave, you know, their whole lives to their whole adult lives to, to service to us, to fighting for us. That's just so important. I like the, the inspire piece there. So when you retired, what kind of services did, did, did you have? I, I assume, um, I don't, I think we said you retired in 2007. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I can't believe how long ago that was. <laughs> Uh, so what kind of services did I have? Um, I mean, so the same, were these same um, retirement services available to you or did you, um, or what kind of what worked and what didn't work for you and how does that drive you to um, want to make things better for those who are retiring today? I understand now. Um, so the, the, the processes and things were not like they are now. The, where I'm encouraging soldiers to start their retirement planning at least 24 months out. Back in 2007, that was four months out was the guidance. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and if you take 90 days of transition leave, you're starting your retirement planning 30 days before you start leave. Uh, so there really wasn't any planning. It was mostly focused on, uh, you know, just out processing. So we've put a lot of energy into improving the, uh, the knowledge and abilities of retirement services officers, broadening their experience, and then uh, pushing things, as we say, to the left of the boom, um, boom being retirement, you know, so that people start to get uh, an idea earlier. So that's, that's the, big, uh, the big change in retirement services since 2007. Mm -hmm. A huge difference 24 months versus four months that's that's incredible um thank you for for the work that you do to make sure that our soldiers are, are taken care of as they uh transition to the, the next stage that's what a difference um you're making to others thank you and uh we're, we're so happy to have you and uh 
on with us today. Where can retirees and soldiers approaching retirement find more information about your office? Um, where can they go online or um, on social media? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's an easy one. Um, <laughs> so soldiers who are looking for retirement planning information can find it on our website, and that's uh, soldierforlife.army.mil slash retirement. If you come to that web page, there you can click on the retirement planning uh, page, and there's a wealth of information there. The U.S. Army Retirement Planning Guide. It's a it's about a 60-page document that lays out all the things you need to think about in the process, uh, all the decisions. We also have there uh, our new retirement planning newsletter called Change of Mission. Yep. And that's a quarter new newsletter that uh, actually you folks uh, in APES, we uh, put out some of your information to make sure that, uh, you know, soldiers getting ready to retire understand that APES will be with them and how uh, they'll be with them uh, once they retire. So the retirement planning guide, um, the, there's a whole page about the survivor benefit plan. Uh, there's a lot of a wealth of information at, at our, our website. And for any retired soldiers out there who are, are listening in, it's the same website, soldierforlife.army.mil slash retirement. And there's a different section of the site for retired soldiers and the things that, uh, you know, that you may need to know about. There is a retired soldier handbook, sort of the counterpart to the retirement planning guide. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, it's about 70 pages. Uh, to cover all the things that you might want to know about in retirement that uh, impact you. So, uh, and the other thing for anybody who's planning to retire, of course, we have the retirement services officers out there on the installations at the state headquarters and in the readiness division headquarters, and they have a wealth of information as well. Yes, yes. retired soldiers, do not be afraid to, to uh, transition because uh, Mr. Overberg and his staff are ready to, to catch you on the other side. So thank you so much. Uh, we've had a wonderful time chatting with you today. Uh, we appreciate all the great information you share with us. Uh, thank you for spending uh, value time with us and also sharing all this information to all the soldiers out there. Um, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, uh, sailors, Marines, Coasties. Uh, there's some form of, of your office in all services. That, that are helping all our service members, uh, you know, cross that threshold. So uh, we wish you the best as you continue to serve our soldiers and their military families. I don't know if you got anything else for, for, for us before you get out of here. Well, actually, I got something for you, Chief. And oh. I, I almost forgot to talk about this. Um, so the the Army has a, a benefit, the Army's official benefits website we run. It's called My Army Benefits. But uh, about six months ago, we launched the companion website called My Air Force Benefits. Oh, okay. It's the Air Force's official benefits website. And so if you go on there, there's lots of information about all, and this is not just for retirement, this is for all airmen. Um, so everything from uh, the, all the benefits that they have, whether in their the federal benefits, their state benefits, there's also a retirement calculator that reaches into the Air Force personnel system. So all you have to do is tell it, when you want to retire uh, and it'll do the calculations for you just like the best is uh, but chief i really want to thank you for this opportunity uh to talk to your listeners today about military retirements and and i appreciate everything APS does for us uh, absolutely absolutely and yeah. i will be checking out that site uh because uh I, I the retirement is, is a lot closer than, than i've ever expected to be uh so i uh, thank you for that information uh we wish you the best as you continue to serve uh everybody and um, if you want to hang, hang out after uh, we're going to close the interview off, but I want to uh, get back, get some information from you before you leave. Okay, great. All right. Thank you.